Okay, so I'm continuing in the last video. We were talking about the equivalence of the matrix in the system. And so um, this uh, matrix shorthand is, is just a lot easier to use than having to write this whole system of equations over and over again. So we're going to use the matrix notation. So um, just for practice then, uh, I could have a matrix like uh, two, three, minus one, zero, two, four, zero, one, negative one, one. And I could say, here's my augmented matrix. Write down the corresponding system of equations. Okay, so you might pause the video for a moment and see if you can write down the corresponding system. Okay, so, um, this is where it's easier to use like xi instead of xyz and w and stuff. So here I would say x1, x2, x3, x4 for my four variables. And so then the system of equations I'm looking at would be 2x1 plus 3x2 minus x3, uh, and then no x4 equals 2, and then 4x1. I'd skip x2, and then x3 would be, um, I can leave space for x3 in here. Uh, plus x3 minus x4 equals uh, 1, although you don't have to keep space there for the missing variables. Good. So these correspond to each other. So uh, we're, again, we're going to use the matrix notation. And our next uh, goal here is to look at elementary row operations. Okay, so what are those? Well, the idea here is that, uh, for example, if I have the system x1 minus 2x2 equals minus 1 minus x1 plus uh, 3x2 equals 3, if I have that system, I'd like to somehow uh, manipulate this system into one that's maybe a little bit easier to use. And so one way to do that is to do elimination, right, from, from algebra. So I notice that uh, I have a positive one and a negative one as my coefficients for x1. So if I add these two equations together, right, then I'm going to lose uh, x1 altogether as a variable. So I'm going to uh, replace the second equation by the sum of the two. And so the first equation is going to stay the same. And the second equation is going to be the sum. So x1 minus x1 would be 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. So that's just going to be x2. And then x2 is just going to be 3 minus 1 is 2. Good. And so this, this system is a lot easier than this system, right, to solve. And then similarly, I want to somehow eliminate x2 uh, from the next set. And so if I uh, multiply equation 2, by 2, and then add that to equation 1, what system would I get? I'm going to re go ahead and replace that. So the second equation is going to stay x2 equals 2, but then the first equation is going to be uh, x1 minus 2x2 plus 2x2, so that's the x2 is going to go away, so I'll just have an x1 here. And then 2x2 two times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3, so that's going to be x1 is equal to 3. Good. And so now I've reduced this system of equations to this system of equations. This system is really easy to solve, right? Because it's, it's right there. x1 is 3 and x2 is 2. So what operations did we use in order to get from here to here? Well, uh, one thing we can do is we can multiply a row by a non-zero scalar. That's valid. And then uh, we can also swap rows. So that's valid. Uh, the, well, a row being an equation, right? Uh, you could have reversed these equations and you would get the same system. But the last one is probably the more complicated one. We did it here. You can take uh, you can replace a row by the sum of the row, take the row, and add it to a multiple of another row. 
Okay. Uh, oh, you can't probably read my writing here. This says, take a row and add it to a multiple of another row. <laughs> and so that's what we did here. So symbolically, what we're doing is, you know, I'm taking row I and I'm adding K times row J and I'm putting the result back into row I. So symbolically, it's probably easier just to write it down. In this case, then, uh, row I is being replaced by K times row I. So row K times row I is uh, going into for row I. And here we're just taking row I and substituting or swapping row J. So these are the three row operations. And the importance of these operations is using if a matrix, if we if we use a, a sequence of row operations on a system of equations, uh, we do not change the solution set. In other words, uh, this system of equations is equivalent to this system of equations, and this system of equations is equivalent to that. So this equation, this system of equations is equivalent to the original, meaning that the solution set to the two are equal. Good. So two, two solution sets or two systems, two systems are equivalent if they have the same solution set. Good. And so it's really important then that if we change our system of equations to another system, that they stay uh, equivalent. Good. So how are we going to change it? Uh, this is giving you an idea. So we're going to start with our first variable, and then we're going to try to eliminate that variable from all the other equations. And then we'll move to the next variable and try to eliminate that from all the equations below it, and so on and so forth. And so let's just try it out. Um, let's, I'm going to pause the uh, video for a second. I'll write down a system of equations we'll solve. Okay, so here's a system of equations. I've written it as an augmented matrix. And now, um, initially here, I want to eliminate uh, x1 from the third equation. And so in order to do that, I need to multiply this equation by something and then add it to this so that this number goes away, right? And so that something will be, I'm going to take 4 times row 1 and then add that to row 3 and then put the result back into row 3. Okay, so up on top here, I'll, I'll multiply it through by 4. So that's going to be 4 uh, minus 8, 4, 0, and let's add these together. So that's 4 and minus 4 is 0. This The top line is going to stay the same. Second line stays the same. Oop, don't have any copiers. And then 4 minus 4 is 0. Uh, what did we say that was? Minus 8 and 5 is minus 3. And then 4 plus 9 is going to be... Uh, 13. Oops, can you read that? It's 13. And then 9 minus 9 plus 0 is minus 9. Good. Now before I continue, I'm going to be looking at uh, the second variable in the second system. So there's a 2 there. I think I'd like to have a 1. It just made it a little bit easier to eliminate the variable. And so in that case, um, the next row operation that we're going to use is we're going to take uh, 1 half times R2 and put the result back into R2. Okay, and so what will our system look like in that case? We'll have our 1 minus 2, 1, 0. 0 now I'm dividing by 2, so that's going to be a 1 minus 4, 4, and then a 0 minus 3, 13 minus 9. Good. And now we're going to continue. Uh, I, need, I want to eliminate x2 from the third equation. So what am I going to multiply this by? Uh, I think I'm going to take 3 times row 2, and then add, three, add the result of r3, and then put the result back into r3, right? 
So let's go ahead and write down the result of that. 1 minus 2, 1 stays the same. 0, 1 minus 4, 4 stays the same. But now when I multiply this by 3, this is going to be a 3 uh, minus 12 and 12. Right, so 3 minus 3 is 0, and then 13 minus 12 is 1, and then 12 minus 9 is 3. Good. So notice right now I've got x1 equals, or x3 equals 3, right? Okay, so now I'm going to work my way uh, back, and I'm going to try to keep x3 to only be in this equation. And so I'm going to try to eliminate x3 from these two equations. And so do you see how we're going to do that? Let's see if we can double up here. We'll take 4 times r3 and then add that to r2 and then put the result back into r2. So that'll take care, that'll take this to 0. And then the other one will just be, I can just subtract this one, so minus r3 plus r1 back to r1. Okay, and so let's take a moment to uh, do our computation here. This would be, uh, it's either 4 and 12 or minus 1, or minus 1 and minus 3, right? So 4 minus 4 is 0. Uh, let's see, this is 0, 1, that'll be 0, and then uh, 12 and 4 it's going to be 16, 0, 0, 1, 3. And then what's this going to be? This is going to be 0, and then, uh, is that minus 3? Good. Okay, and then finally, um, I'm going to, going to eliminate x2 from the first uh, equation. And I'll do that by taking 2 times row 2 uh, plus row 1, and then put the result back into row 1. And if I do that, right, that's going to be a 2, and uh, what's 2 times 16? Oop, hold it. Okay, sorry about that. We're running short of time here. So uh, we end up with, uh, where were we? Uh, 2 times... Yes, 2 times 16 is 32, and then minus 3 would give us a 29 there, right? So 1, 0, 0, 29, 0, 1, 0, 16, 0, 0, 1, 3. Good. And this is kind of the, the goal of our uh, row manipulation. This tells us directly that x1 is equal to 29, x2 is equal to 16, and x3 is equal to 3. And we're done. By the way, if we had just asked, is the system consistent, and we didn't ask for the exact solution, could we have stopped early? And I think we could have stopped with this matrix right here. Right, because as soon as you see that each of the variables um, has a 1 in this position here, like this. Uh, like, this is the only place that we're, uh, with a 1 here, we're going to define x3, right? So x3 is defined in this equation. Then when you substitute x3 into this second equation, right, you can solve for x2. So x2 is defined to be um, this expression here, 4 plus 4 times x3. And so if I find x2 and x3, then the top one also is defined using this one here, right? So it's going to be 0 minus uh, x3 plus 2x2. And so that means that um, I'm able to solve for each of the variables independently. So I could have stopped right here. I didn't have to go through all the rest of the work. What we haven't seen so far, and what we'll do in the next video, is to see what, what happens if the system is not consistent. What happens if not consistent? And so I'll shut the video off uh, here and we'll continue uh, looking at that.